we used every single ship asset that we had and put them in the water and we moved them around for different scenes and everything so that when we're looking off, we would minimize the amount of visual effects we used to extend the background so that all the world around them felt, you know, real, incredible and believable. I am very excited to talk with you about the live action One Piece. It was quite the blast from start to finish. Uh, and as someone who was not familiar with the source material prior, uh, it's gotten me to dive into the anime now. Uh, and that's been a lot. That's great. That's great. Um, now, the One Piece I, uh, property is one of the most iconic around, eh, around the world. Uh, were you familiar with it prior to being approached for the show? I can't lie to you. I was not. Um, I'm the wrong demographic. And uh, so, but um, but luckily, my kids knew all about it, because when they first approached me about it, I went and uh, said to them, so, you know, what do you know about this manga called One Piece? And they just looked at me and they went, oh, my God, everybody knows One Piece like this. <laughs> so that was great. Um, and, uh, you know, so and, and then since then, I've just discovered what a huge fan base there is for, uh, you know, for this. It was like half of my art department uh, were all huge fans. And to work on the show for them was like, you know, the dream job to be doing uh, the translation into live action for, you know, for the manga. Um, and uh, yeah, so it was it was huge. Um, I got to say, one of the things uh, about not, you know, about not prior, being a fan prior, because uh, I've been asked this question before, but um, uh, and I knew it would be uh, coming up. But, um, uh, you know, I, I think actually it helped a lot to come to it fresh because I had no preconceptions about it. And so when I was discovering the characters, it was like, you know, when the fans discover the characters and the world and everything for the first time. And, uh, you know, and, and so I didn't have any kind of, you know, biases towards certain characters or uh, anything like that. And so I could kind of come to it with fresh eyes. So, uh, you know, I think that helped as well so then what was it like uh because i'm sure you 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 did uh but what was it like diving into the manga and the anime uh for the research and really preparing that i mean did you you know did you only lightly touch upon it while going while you know trying to envision your own world or did you really you know do as much research as possible to to really be able to bring this to life when you have a property uh that is so loved by so many fans you have to honor it and you have to honor the source material so we did a huge amount of research into uh kind of every aspect of it um and you know uh, and, and we had a number of great resources so I'll, um i didn't look at the anime the anime was already an interpretation of the original material so i went straight back to the the manga to, to look um i didn't I didn't read the manga through for this whole story arc. I really looked at the bits that were relevant to our script um, because partly because I kind of, you know, we were telling a particular story, you know, it isn't everything in that whole story arc. Uh, we did, you know, the writers did change uh, parts of the story around just to make uh, like a TV, uh, you know, TV adaptation, um, in, you know, uh, uh, kind of flow better and everything, which will be different to the manga. It's a different, it's a different medium. Um, and then uh, had some great resources like uh, Oda, uh, you know, has this book, The Rubaru, um, that has all of the original uh, inspirations for a lot of the settings in the manga. Um, so, you know, for instance, uh, the in Logue Town, uh, you know, his inspiration was Florence. And, you know, he's quite open about these things. And part of it is like, you know, One Piece takes you on a journey kind of throughout the world, but in, you know, but seen through kind of the Oda's lens of One Piece kind of thing. So, that was um uh that was super useful to be able to actually kind of look at where the original inspirations came from and then you know kind of build on those from there um you know in Lowtown, for instance you know going into the manga 
he actually, you know, references a couple of real stores in Florence. So, you know, I felt duty bound to reference the same stores. We have those, you know, we have those store signs in there. It looks different. Um, but, uh, you know, we wanted to put those Easter eggs in so that people knew we were paying attention. I love that. This is, I mean, everybody I've talked to has talked about how many, or, you know, their their desire to make this just right for Oda as well as for fans and, and sprinkle those Easter eggs in. So I love that. And so you mentioned the scripts uh, a moment ago and, and you know, wanting to bring those in particular to life. And I'm curious if there was any one script of the eight that you read and you were the most excited to help, you know, envision uh, on screen. I think it it was always the next script. <laughs> so uh to be honest because it was such a fabulous uh world to you know to create. Um and the scale of it was was so huge. Um and because it's a travel story, you know, every two episodes you're moving on to a different part of the world. It was like doing four quite big feature films back to back. Um, so it was, you know, um, and we had a, we kind of had a joke in the art department, you know, people would ask each other, it's like, you know, or they'd say, you know, oh, you know, I'm working on Baratier. I think this is my favorite set. And then about a month later, you know, you'd walk in and they'd say, oh, you know, I'm working on Kokiyashi Village. I think this is my favorite set. It was, you know, um, and it was kind of the same with the, uh, you know, with the scripts as well. Um, it just kept on giving, you know, that we weren't sort of, you know, but because we were just constantly moving on to new worlds, it was, uh, you know, the next one was always uh, uh, very exciting. Um, I think the one, uh, you know, if, if you were going to ask me which uh, episodes that I was most excited for the fans to see, I think I'd say the episodes uh, in Syrup Village and uh, Kaya's Mansion in particular. And the reason for that is because in the manga, you never go inside Kaya's Mansion. But all of almost all of that is, takes place inside Kaya's mansion. So we had to create that. And that that was the you know a huge challenge because you know we didn't really have a, a, a lot to go on from the manga, the original source material, but we had to stay true to to the you know to Oda's work and to One Piece. So it had to be true to the spirit of it. Um and the way, you know, the way I did that, which is the way I designed so many of the sets, is I told stories about the characters uh, from based on what I knew about them from Oda, um, from what I had seen in the mangas, uh, from what our, um, one of our showrunners, uh, Matt Owens, is a huge One Piece fan and a kind of a total geek about it. And he, you know, whenever we had a question of would this be correct for the world, he was the one who... Either he knew or he would go and find out first because so he was great. Um, but I just tell stories. So in Kaya's mansion, the story was her grandparents started a shipbuilding company there. Everybody from the East Blues to come and have their ships built. Um, and so they had a sales room where they had like uh, a murals of, of, of ships that they had built on the wall, like a sales room. Uh, I figured that in the dining room, you know, it ended up being covered in porcelain on the ceilings the walls everywhere because the people who are buying the ships they might they might not have had cash you know they were pirates they 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 were stealing stuff so instead of cash they'd say oh i've got a big pile of porcelain fine porcelain in the hold i'll pay for the ship that way they decorated the dining room i love that thought process and i i mean i do love the way that uh this show tweaks uh, that that storyline to include more in the mansion and everything. It was really exciting to see. Um, now, you mentioned the scale not too long ago, and you're right. I mean, this the scale of everything in the show is just massive, whether it be the sets or the action or, you know, whatever it is. And I'm curious, what was then the most challenging, you know, set or, well, I guess, yeah, set uh, to really put together to match the scale of you know Matt, Steve, and Ichiro's uh, uh, ambitions. Well, there were a lot of them that were a challenge. <laughs> I can tell you. Um, I think the one single set that was probably the biggest challenge would be Baratier Restaurant, um, because first of all, it's a massive set. I think it was the single biggest set that we built. Uh, you know that that the that ship with the giant fish head on it. Um, 
and uh, and it had to be in a tank that was you know on our back lot and everything, quite a shallow tank. Um, and the big challenge was that you know we really wanted to mis- minimize the amount of visual effects. This was quite old fashioned movie making. We wanted to build the sets so that the world because we're translating from like you know from a manga into live action this world had to look real you know all of these fans have spent years with this property they've all got in their imagination their version of one piece so when we create it in the real world it has to look real for them we can't just do you like a visual effects background and however fantastic it looks kind of hope people you know will buy into it it's like, no, it's got to have texture. It's got to have smell. It's got to have sculptures of one piece things and Easter eggs, you know, tucked away in it and everything that are real. And so that you actually really feel like you're in this parallel universe of, of one piece. So this was a huge set that when you're outside it, you see off all the time and you see into our back lots and our parking lots and the and the highway that's just uh, you know over the hill over there you you know you see all of this so we used every single ship asset that we had and put them in the water and we moved them around for different scenes and everything so that when we're looking off we would minimize the amount of visual effects we used to extend the background so that all the world around them felt you know real incredible and believable i'm glad you took those efforts because yes the the outside of obviously the um devil fruit powers this feel this world feels very real uh and so i'm, I'm glad that you your your efforts paid off uh um, great great glad now, to hear it uh we've discussed oda a few times in this and everybody that i've talked to you know they they've mentioned his i mean his his involvement in the show is pretty well documented it feels like at this point but what was it what was it like for you working with him you know did you get much interaction with him and if so how did it feel to really you know collaborate with him to bring this to life i'll be honest i didn't uh actually interact directly with oda so when we had and uh, and I think he was, you know, he was content to allow us to um, do what we do best, which is the movie making. And, uh, you know, and once I think because he was happy with the scripts and then uh, I sent my presentation of like most of the, the uh, you know, of, of the concepts to him. Um, and he came back and, you know, gave us a thumbs up and he said, yeah, no, this this feels like my world. So, uh, and then from there, you know, I think he was sort of content to let us carry on with that. Where where we did uh, go back to Oda was when we had certain questions that we couldn't either find the answer in the manga um, or in the, you know, in the kind of broader law, other books that he's produced and everything. Um, And, you know, there were some interesting ones. Uh, There were only a few, but they were big. They were quite a big deal. One was, uh, my big question very early on was, um, does this world have electricity? Um, because I knew that there was Kohler power in later in a later story arc that created electricity. Um, but I, you know, I needed electricity. We needed to light these sets. I needed to use different kinds of lights. We couldn't light everything by candle daylight, you know. So, um, uh, so it was a it was a, a big issue at the time. And so we went to Oda and we said, Oda, you know, what what do you think about this? It's like, do you have electricity? Can we use Kohler power? And it actually took him by surprise because he was like, oh, I never really thought about this, you know, uh, because, you know, why would you? It's a practical question. So and he came, he thought about it and he came back to us. He said, yes, you can have electricity in in the world. Don't do it with Kohler power. That comes later in, in a later story arc. So let's not use it here. We'll use it later on. So maybe in season two, three, I don't know, they'll introduce the whole Kohler power of it. But and he said he said this is a really big deal, you know, uh, to say uh, that there is electricity in this world. You know, it's like it's a new aspect to the world kind of thing. So that was one of the things. And whenever we had a question, it was generally a kind of a, a pretty fundamental one like that. 
I love that because I, I myself, you know, 30 episodes or so now into the anime. Uh, I know the anime is different from the manga, but regardless, like 30 episodes in, I myself was curious. I was like, oh, yeah, I wonder if this world does have electricity or not. It's not very clear. And then obviously the neon sign in the in child Luffy's bar sticks out right away. Uh, right. In action. So I was like, huh. That is an interesting point. But yeah, I'm I love that you even made Oda have to go back and think about that. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, now you know the answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I do. <laughs> um, so uh for my final couple of questions, uh these are a little more big picture, but um the live action anime genre is a very tricky one. Uh it's, it's one that's that's had a lot of misfires in uh throughout the years. And so I'm curious, you know, when you were approached for this, um, if that was something that was in your mind and if that created any kind of reservations for you about joining the project? No, it didn't. I mean, I, I'm aware of that. And whenever I've seen, you know, I mean, let's let's not mention any names, but whenever I've seen shows that have had that and seen those misfires, I've also been very aware of why they didn't work. Um, and for me, it's because they didn't, they, you know, they they would fall in love with one aspect of the show, and it might be how amazing the world looks, you know, and they kind of focus that. Um, but really, what you know, uh, I think what all these properties, the reason why people love them is they love the characters. They respond to what the characters are about, and and then the world from you know of the characters is built around them and so you know when i approached this i went straight to the characters i went to luffy's character i went you know to to all of them and it's like okay the, you know these are these are big bold characters it's a big bold world and everything um and you know once you do that then you're on you're kind of on safe ground um and so um you know, it's things like uh, the figurehead on the Going Merry that absolutely encompasses Luffy's character. It, you know, he's indomitable, he's courageous, and he's funny and laughs in the face of danger. So, you know, you take the thing that's in the manga. You, if you made it in real life, it would look kind of goofy. But you make, you know, so I created a ram's head that was laughing and. You know, uh, and and suddenly it worked, and it was like, yeah, this is the spirit of Luffy in a figurehead. We changed the eyes so that they were the manga eyes, so that it actually, you know, sort of uh, uh, looped back to the the manga itself and felt more one piece. You know, not just like a you know a, a, a ram's head figurehead, but actually felt like the one piece one. And so, you know, honored honored Oda's work in in that way. But always it was with character, you know. Um, there was uh, there was actually one of the early sets uh, was one of the ones where it really, you know, we really defined this thing where the character actually dictated the set uh, in Morgan's office. No one was expecting a set, the, the scale of the set that we built for Morgan's office. Um, I know that Steve, uh, one of our showrunners, he, you know, he'd imagined it in his own head when he was writing it as like an office on a military base kind of thing. But again, you go into the character of Gar, I mean, of um, uh, of Morgan, and, and he's this over the top, narcissistic, loud, you know, uh, you know, self uh, self aggrandizing, and he had to have an office that suited his character. Funnily enough, I based the whole idea of his desk being a long way from the door on you know the original uh, Louis B. Mayer office, where you know, uh, which he had exactly the same thing to make everybody scared before they got to the desk, and there were steps up to it. The ceiling's really high. There's huge statues of Morgan. There's enormous uh, portraits of Morgan, like you know winning in battle and everything and that all came from his character but it was also very it was like really one piece as well and funnily enough that you know that moment when we uh, designed that set sort of defined that uh that feeling so i think i think that's kind of where uh you know the approach that we took to one piece which you know sounds like it's uh paying off well, that was actually going to be my my final, very final question for you was that, you know, the embargo dropped the other day. And so people like myself who have seen it are being able to finally talk about it now. And 
uh, from what I've seen, the reactions are glowing. Have you had the chance to see any? And, and how are you feeling from seeing them? Yeah, there was a big thing on YouTube with these two, uh, with, um, you know, uh, two uh, people in the, the show. And, you know, what's really gratifying is that they they were talking about it and they they were just enjoying everything, you know, every aspect, you know, the stories, the the humor. I mean, because that's such a, you know, that's such an important thing and not always easy to get right. Um, and uh, and the storytelling as well, because, you know, we're, like we were very bold in the way that uh, um, Mark, Mark Jobs, who was the producing director, did the who did the first two episodes. You know, he established this style with these super wide lenses, which gives it that feel of the manga as well. And again, when I was designing the sets, I had to design the sets knowing we were going to be using super wide lenses quite often. So I had to design in the ceilings and everything because we, we were we were going to see all of this. Um, it's really I have to say, you know, we did go the extra mile to put in like all the Easter eggs, you know, uh, and and there's so much stuff. If you look in the background, that uh, is stuff that you know you wouldn't expect to find. Look in the Baratier restaurant in the background. All the paintings there are landscapes of places in uh, in the One Piece world that Zeph has been to or might have gone to. Uh, and we researched that and we created all these portraits and all of that. You know, you don't really see it as part of the action. But we wanted to put in all those Easter eggs. And I think that level of detail that we put in and had so much fun doing as well. Um, I think, on, uh, you know, I uh, it, uh, we were doing it to honor the imagination of the fans and honor Oda's work. Um, and it sounds like it's paid off. So that's good. I know it's paid off for me uh, as as someone who was new to the world uh, and is now engrossed in it. And I can't wait for people to finally see it in a couple of days. So thank you so much for taking the time to chat and, and break down this world for me. I really do appreciate it. Yeah, no, it was a pleasure. So thanks a lot.